Hey, man, when I, I was thinking about doing this interview, man, and uh, I think a lot about what you have done for the city and everything. And I really want people to get to know who Coach Calvin is, man, the, the, the coach behind Javante Tank Davis. And tell us a little bit about yourself, man, how you actually got into boxing and everything. Well, um, if some people don't know, I've been in boxing for a long time ago. I have a friend named Reggie Gross. Yes, um, yes. He fought Mike Tyson, right? There you go. We did time together, and that's what actually really pushed me towards boxing, to tell you right. the truth. But um, when we all went in, we all went in. Uh, he seen me, you know, hitting the bag and stuff, and he said, they said, yo, everybody said, yo, you, you good with your hands. But I was actually in boxing, to tell you the truth. So, um, you know, me and Reggie, we hung out real good. And then I have a friend named Warren Bordley. He was a uh, boxer, too, for uh, Mr. Mac Lewis. And mm -hmm. um, they thought I was going to come home and start, start boxing. I said, man, I might look young, but I'm actually older. You know what I'm saying? So I just came home, and my son and my nephew was in the basement hitting on the bag. And I asked my cousin, he used to box. Did he teach him anything? Mm -hmm. rest, rest was history. Uh huh. You just uh, you just blanked out for a second. I yeah. I hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, might be the internet service and whatnot because mm -hmm. it's saying it's going, but I got all my bars and whatnot. But um, the rest was history and stuff. I ain't look back after that. You know, I just keep it more. Okay, and from what I understand, your your son Quadir, he's the one that uh hooked you up with Tank. Is that correct? Well, in the gym we had I had a kid named Ramon Manley that Tank used to look up to. Mm -hmm. And we had my um, partner, Coach Mac Allison, we had this thing to take a kid and put him up under your wing. And my son took Tank up under his wing. And my son was like, he was really, my son was from Jersey. I had him stand in Baltimore because he was, he was on that rock. He was on that, that, that road of being like I was coming up. Mm -hmm. and which was, he was like a kingpin in um, Jersey, Trenton, New Jersey. Wow. Um, told me, he said, Dad, you got to keep Shorty up under your wing. And I don't know what he told Tank. That whole time, Tank been with me like he was my son, you know. And I lost my son to death. Yeah, I'm when sorry, I to you, Tank, bro. When I brought Tank home for um, his first pro fight in Baltimore, not his first, but his fourth pro fight in Baltimore at the Cotton State, something we was planning for about seven years, and it, it jumped off. I got home that night. I got home that morning. Well, I woke up that morning. My um, uh, wife told me that um, Kyrie got killed, you know. So, yeah, so, you know, rest was history and whatnot, you know. So Tank and I, we've seen a lot of death around us. We've seen a lot of lot of, lot of, of strange things, you know. We're just thankful to be where we're at. But I understand that our Lord have us on the mission to actually tell our story and to, you know, get other kids, other fighters, anybody that's in our circle line that put the right people around them, anything is possible. Wow, man. And that's truly amazing for the simple fact, man, to be able to get it tank up underneath your wing, but not just be able to get him underneath your wing, but to be able to keep him up underneath your wing, man. And Because Baltimore, man, it's a tough town. It's truly a tough town, and it's, it, there's a lot of, lot of things that actually make kids gravitate to it, you know, the, the, the life and everything else. So how are you able to actually keep him from not falling into that life, bro? Well, it wasn't just me by myself. As you know, I got a lot of partners and I, yeah. and I advocate. I'm from the streets. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm like this, if I see any of my street guys and whatnot, I say, yo, if it's a kid that got some talent, man, push him to the gym. I right. said, why? Well, I say, if you push him to the gym and give back to him, that's a life you say. You know what I'm saying? And I always believe you're either going to do this or you're not. You know what I'm saying? So if he, a person give you a chance to actually get out in the street, you do this, but you decide to come back, you want to be one of the guys. You don't want to be saved. So let them be. But if you stay in that gym, I'm going to make sure you're good. Man, and, um, so you, I, had, I had had police officers was training at my gym. And mm -hmm. I just tell them, you see any of my guys standing out there with certain guys, harass them. Okay, was that the guy with the Detective Burns? Was he one of them? Hello? Looks like we're getting uh, a little turbulence right there. Are you there, Calvin? I think that Wi-Fi doing this is bad right now. 
as you all see that uh, we got coach Calvin here he's pretty much telling us his story on how he actually uh got into boxing and how he met Tank and how he was able to keep him in the gym and things of that nature uh hopefully we're going to be able to get him right back again this Wi-Fi is definitely killing us. I hope everybody's having a good evening right now. There you go. We yeah, back. I apologize. People calling me at the wrong time. Usually I don't get this. They already know at a certain time, don't call me and whatnot. But it's 815, so they're trying to get their calls in. Their calls in before I go on my podcast. <laughs> so everybody, maybe we <laughs> That's man. You're an important person, bro. You know. Um, I just... I'm doing a work of my Lord. I don't consider myself important than the next man. I don't even consider myself important than you. You know, we all we all have a mission. And I've walked a, a many different lives so far. You know what I'm saying? And I think this is my last one. Hope not. You know what I'm saying? That I get to do something else other than just boxing, you know, and whatnot. So, again, I'm just, just doing what he, my spirit tell me to do. Well, I can definitely say you're truly humble, bro. You, you've always, every time I've ever met with you, and we done met a few times, we done did a few interviews. We even talked when that, that one time I was working at Mercedes Benz. So we always had our conversations, and you've always been the same guy each and every time. So thank you. You, you, you never change whatsoever. Hey, well, let's, let's switching gears, man. So we, we got Hector Garcia coming up uh, January the 7th. And, uh, one thing I've already know that you already said to me uh, when we was at the uh, conference last week is that you all taking him seriously. You, yeah. you know, definitely not. Go ahead. You have to take him serious because he signed the contract to fight. He's on a winning streak. He already beat up a top notch prospect already. He son, I said he's son son. You know what I'm saying? Watching the fight and whatnot. And um, everybody say, oh, Tank. You're going to walk right. Nah, don't put that in your head. In history, because a big fight before a fight can actually run into some turbulence that you can have a bad night. You know what I'm saying? So right now, I just got young and folks on that. We only want to talk about Garcia. We're talking about Hector Garcia. You with me? And I told everybody at the press conference, I don't want to hear about Garcia. I'm dealing with Hector. You know what I'm saying? I got to show up that night. You know, um, I look at it that we picked. That particular fight, because when you look at the Terrence Crawford situation, when he picked the guy that he picked, the uh, internet went crazy because they didn't know the guy and everything. But we picked the right guy because he just beat up a, a New York native that was on his way. You know what I'm saying? And he son son him. You know what I'm saying? So I know he's going to come to this fight. He's undefeated. He's a champion. You with me? Yeah. I'm, yeah. Come, come to fight. And I know it. he had nothing to lose. Oh, yeah. He, he nothing to lose and he has everything to gain yeah. and, and, and nobody's saying the same thing like what they were saying about Crawford who was that guy or this that and the other everybody's like whoa yeah. this is like tuna yeah. you know what I mean? so you know and I, I I take my hat off to y'all man because uh you definitely ain't picking easy I'm gonna tell you that much everybody try to say that tank try picking if he go look at everybody record that took um, I call it um, a guideline, a guide, a boxing to get him to be a guy. Go look at everybody's record. But if you look at Tank record, Tank been really fighting guys. You know what I'm saying? So, again, especially when he got with Floyd. When he got with Floyd, Floyd was trying to give him a world title shot when he first signed him. I'm like, nah, uh, man. It's so much you got to learn. And then, you know, when it was time with Tank, they said, yo, you got it. You're right, Floyd. Let's do it. And we fought an undefeated champion. Pedraza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm going to tell you, when that was happening, everybody was saying, oh, that's a setup. That's yeah. a setup. Because everybody felt that him and Floyd wasn't really, you know, hitting, it, hitting on real good. And they was like, they was thinking that Floyd was setting them up for a defeat. I can't see you want to do that. That don't make sense to me. Because uh, uh, if you, if one day when you read Tank Book, you'll see why some people were saying that. But, you know... He was just he Floyd gonna test you, you know, that he came up in that era that you had to fight. You go look at the stable guys that he had in his camp. They had to fight. Well, because, I remember that, yeah. Um, when you invested in a fighter, you want to test drive what you got. Mm -hmm. Trying to get you them them top guys. 
You know, if I, you can't beat the guys underneath the top guys, what's the point for me investing in you? Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, man, we hear so many war stories in the gym. I heard Tank knocked out a heavyweight. Was it a light heavyweight or a heavyweight? Truly heavyweight. It was a heavyweight. Tank knocked out. I had one kid. I ain't going to mention his name. He fight MMA. He called me. One of my mm -hmm. fights. He said, Coach, I'm retiring. Why? He said, man, that little nigga, yo, making me think the way how he hit. She. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to show it to y'all. I'm going to show it to you. I'm getting charged. If you, if you had. If you had to gauge your own tank's power and based on weight division, what would you put his weight division, his his punching power, and what weight division would you say that it evens into? See, it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. He rocking 165 guys. Mm. Yes. Mm. And I can tell when he uh, he had rocked 165 guys. Mm -hmm. guys. You know what I'm saying? It depends what mode you catch Tank that night. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you look at Fight Height, Fight Height said it. All the guys that he sparred, he said, man, he got that power with this. Bang! Man. That's what everybody, I mean, I've talked to a lot of people that done sparred him, you know, been in the gym and seen fights, blase, blase. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of them don't even talking about how he be knocking cats out. A lot of them be telling me about his boxing skills, which people don't. <laughs> I'm talking too much. <laughs> no, but if you hear me, I always say I don't care about the knockouts. I feel I care about him putting on a performance, showing his skills. My partner, Coach Kenny, he mm -hmm. likes knockouts. You know what I'm saying? But um, again, the best haven't came out of the tank yet. I'm hoping Hector might be that guy because he had nothing to lose. He can yeah. put it on the line. Yeah, that's what a lot of people tell me. They say, man, he haven't he even reached into his toolbox yet, man. And if he hasn't reached into his toolbox yet, that's scary, coach. I, I, you see how I'm current? Don't play with – stop playing with Tank. Stop that's, playing. That's, when, we, when we get in that ring, and I, 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 I hate to say that. You see what he did to Cruz? Yeah. You see what he did to Cruz? It was just what night you catch Tank in. You know what I'm saying? Um, Never again. Yeah. The only one time I seen Tank second guess this up, but he put the work in when he was fighting Barrios. It was his first time fighting the guy at 140 in the height. And you see what he did to him. Yeah. And he wasn't, he didn't even step on the gas all the way. You see when he did that flip off the ring, he still had more in him. And and nailed it, man. I mean, <laughs> he landed like a gymnast, bro. That was amazing, man, for sure. He had that type of – and he does get stronger as the rounds go. I, I, I see that. Uh, definitely – he's definitely an athlete for sure. Yeah. So he pretty much did anything, to be truthfully honest. And he's dangerous. You hear what I'm saying? He's dangerous. Stay tuned for all access. When you, that, 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 that series – when that come out, we mm -hmm. Per se, mm. I, I, I'm I, I'm old school. We don't care no more. Everybody keep calling them out. We don't call nobody out. We don't do none of that. We we ask them. We 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 did everything that they asked us to do, and deal it to the fullest. You know what I'm saying? Um, the narrative that they're trying to get. If it wasn't for Floyd, he wouldn't be where yet. If it wasn't for both of them doing what they was doing, that he wouldn't be where yet. Yeah, you just gotta have the talent because. Who else over there is doing what Tank's doing? So if you don't have the talent, I mean, May Mayweather is definitely the engine. Oh. You hear what I say? Yeah. You hear what I you say? Yo, how you put up with Floyd all in the corner? I said, man, that's greatness right there. There you go. Let me explain something to you. Just to have him telling me to narrate two things, you can't buy that. That's priceless. You know what I'm saying? And um, we talk. We talk mm -hmm. about strategies and everything. And he said it in one of his interviews. He said, I don't care about the money tank. I care about the talent. He see it. He see himself. He say it. You get what I'm saying? So right now, when I sit back and listen to Floyd um, interviews and stuff, Tank is just doing the same thing he's doing. He's great to take care of this era. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to that era and this era. You get what I'm saying? You got the Shakur. You got the Devin Haynes. You got the Romo. You got the, uh, we made a star. We made Cruz, two. Cruz, <laughs> and Rolly. You made two stars. <laughs> but that, 
this era is changing. But guess what? Judgment Day is coming. Mm. Say that again. Judgment Day is coming. Ooh. So for you to say that, that makes me say, you know, Hector Garcia, me personally, I feel though y'all going to win that fight. But now Tank is controlling his career. That's the thing. And then he, if y'all listen to him, when he just did some interviews, he said he didn't ask for the big fights. That wasn't our job. We, basically, <laughs> we had to listen to what they tell us to do. You get what I'm saying? You know, all fighters want the big fights. Mm -hmm. okay? But I'm like this. Tank, if anything go wrong in that fight, who going to take care of you and your family? So make sure the money right. If the money right, the fight right. Simple as that. Simple as that. Because he the one in there getting in there taking them punches. Floyd even said it. He said he so, said I didn't need to get the lion's share of the money. Why shouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Why? Because it ain't no insurance company out here, life insurance for them afterwards or uh, any of that type stuff for these fighters, man. And we've seen in history so many fighters that can barely talk now and greeting people at Las Vegas casinos and all types of stuff. So, yeah, yeah Mayweather changed the game. He said, that, that if, again. If, Mayweather was like, if a nigga bad guy sold in the park, he wanted in on it. And yeah. he got it. Yeah, so right now, it's tank time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's this time. So right now, we try to follow that legacy that Floyd laid down and make our own legacy. And it's it's it's, it's there for the grab. We just got to make it through Hector. Hector is in the way right now. He laid the blueprint. You all get past Hector and all these other cats that's making these conversations. I'm pretty much sure y'all going to spear, spearhead straight to him and send him that. Well, well, we're going to test the water. We're going to test the water. Everybody said they want to fight him. We're going to test the water. Ooh. That speaks for itself right there, then. Because right now, he's, he, 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 I said, yo, be the boss. He said, I ain't trying to be the boss. I'm trying to be a leader. Mm. I say, I like that, youngin. You know what I'm saying? Because boss tell people what to do. He want to lead his people. So you're going to show them how to do it. Right, and that's the people that's coming behind them. That's the whole idea. And, and that's what this undercard is all about, January the 7th. Oh, you, you see it? Somebody called me and told me that was a, that's an old Don King card. I it is. Think. It Yo, is. I, man, that's tribute to Don King. You know, so yeah. don't what we're trying to do with boxing and how we're trying to stir boxing. You get what I'm saying? And that card is a fight card. Yeah. Oh no, that's a real card. Yeah, that's a. Because that's... Cause normally the card be so top heavy that yeah. ain't no that for nobody else to be on the card that's worth anything. Yeah, you, yeah. You end up getting a crappy card. Yeah. I mean, y'all got boots on the card. Y'all brought the Petersons back. Y'all got Rashidi Ellis on there. I mean, come on, man. Y'all got boots. Y'all got Boo Andre on there. Come on. Yo, that's that's a fight by itself. These, I'm talking about people that done had their own cards. Yeah, yeah. They all humbled themselves and said, all right, we're going to have a block party. January. No, they understand they're real fighters. They understand the fight game. They fight. We're gonna, it's, it's a fight party. <laughs> <laughs> fight party. So if yeah. you're not fighting, you better be in front of a TV or at the fight with us. Oh, man. And it's pay-per-view, so they get the shine. Yeah, yeah. It, man, I mean, I, I, I'm so hyped about January 7th. And it's in our hometown. It's yeah. in the DMV. Yeah. You can't beat that for a baseball bat. <laughs> you talking about, man. So you know how we get together when we all, when Baltimore, D.C. get together, man. Yeah, man, I can't wait. I can't wait. I feel like I'm in prison, man. We locked up. We do the same. Joe. <laughs> 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 Man, speaking about prison, boy, that fight that you had and you told Tank, man, and, and that was one of the best quotes, man. You told him to put that knife in him, man, and that was classic, man. <laughs> what was going through your mind at that particular time? In the gym joking and uh -huh. body in and they was like poking them. I said, Yo, what the hell are you doing, man? I said, if you was in a joint, man, then they going to put that knife in you. You're going to put that knife in you. And I <laughs> I put that knife in him and Tank looked at me and said, yeah, you're right about that, coach. And I didn't pay attention to his face expression until Kenny said, yo, look at his face. 
He was eating that all. He up. was into it. <laughs> and it scared me, you know. But um, just watching him mature, watching him come into his own stuff, man, it's amazing. It's it's amazing, man. It's amazing, you know. So I just can't wait to see what he's taking us to. Yeah, you know what? And uh, that takes me back to another quote, and I wrote, even wrote it down, man. And you said, Tank is like Michael Jordan. I'm waiting to see what type of performance he's going to put together for us. Mm -hmm. You wonder what's next. He got something planned. He don't tell us everything, but he got that, he got that look like something's planned. When we ask him what it is, he just smiles. He got that little smirk. So we just waiting to look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He in the gym, man. So he's still surprising you then. Well, because, you know, I always say my best tank was my little tank. You know what I'm saying? Okay. If you could ever go watch some. Like, y'all see him do things. He was doing this as an amateur. You know what I'm saying? And he always was trying to evolve, evolve, evolve. You know, and now it's like, yo, this is your era. What you plan to do? You know what I'm saying? He just gave me that smile. You know what I'm saying? And I'm looking at it. I'm sitting bit. I'm looking at him like he's about to embrace this shit. And once he embraces it, it's a wrap. Mm. I'm going to tell you what I like. What I'm seeing more, I see more of a discipline tank now. I, when I say that, I've been watching his career for a long time. Yeah, you know, I'm a, when it comes to boxing, I'm an old head. My first fight that I watched was Muhammad Ali, Ken Norton, three. Ooh. I was eight. You know mm. what I mean? I've been loving this game for a very long time. Yeah. And uh, it, it's my passion. It's what I love. You know what I mean? But, um... I see the discipline in Tank now. I don't see him going up and down and wait anymore. I, I I don't see the whole bunch of clubbing anymore. I all I see is him working out now. I see him perfecting his craft now. I see his conversation is totally different now. You know what I mean? And I see. I know he say he's a leader, but I'm seeing boss moves as well. Yeah. So it, it seemed like he woke up and said, "You know what?" I got a lot to offer right now. And I'm going to take this bull by the horns and see how far I take it. That's what I'm seeing now. Um, just listening. Wrong. Tank don't talk too much. No. All this, and I'm 58. I think Kenny's 50. Mm -hmm. 45. No, Russ right here 50. I think he's 50. And we we the old heads in the gym. Yeah, I'm 54. <laughs> Speaking. Mm -hmm. And the gym was quiet. Mm -hmm. Quiet. And Kenny looked at me, and I looked at Kenny, and I looked at Tank. And I was like, yo, this joker dropping some jewels. Mm -hmm. And that from him, it's like, I can't wait. I, it's like, it's like, I can't wait to see what's next. Yeah, me too. And you know, and what Tank was he's 28 or 29? He's 28. They say when the fight is around 28, 29, they're in their prime right now. Would you consider him in his prime right now? Yeah, I'm like this. When Tank signed with Floyd, I used to tell Floyd, I said, Floyd, his boxing IQ is surpassed his age. Mm. He's really like an old man boxing-wise. Like you say, your old head, that's how he is in this, in this, in this witch car. He's in a young frame body at 28. You know what I'm saying? But his mental for his boxing, you know what I'm saying? He can go in the archives that Jokers ain't never been in that. He can he can he can sit there and show you moves and do little things that you've seen if you truly a real boxing fan. Say, man, that young is some he been he been somewhere in that boxing archives or that boxing um um you know where they keep them great ones at. In the archives, you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so again, but it's it's Archives is archives, but something like it's the Holy Grail. Ooh. <laughs> Holy Grail, like you know, only a certain one get a chance to get, peek in. Ah, uh, boy, it look like we're getting a little turbulence again, y'all. We're having a beautiful conversation right now with Coach Calvin. He's letting us know how Tank has definitely has matured so much in his uh division in his boxing career. There you go, you back. back 
Yeah, I had Channel 13 hit me up, man. So, <laughs> yeah, kids was at, you know, they were Channel 13. So, it was a, I had to do a quick interview with okay. them. Cool, 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 cool. That's so, what's yeah, now, yeah. Everybody, man, how you was just saying that how uh, Tank is just coming into his own now. And then uh, how he's just pretty much directing his thing and moving it the way he needs it to be uh, moved at this particular time. And that you all are sitting back just like, wow, man. Well, we're still doing our job. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh I, know, I know that. <laughs> uh, uh, how, how you say? He said something to me the other day on, on a situation. And I said, yo, let me explain something. The, 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 the better you get, we're going to get even better. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I said, that's because we're reflection of each other now. How long have you been knowing Coach Kenny, boss? Man, Kenny been the first person was in my ears when I first went through D.C. And he watched me take five kids that made my fist and went through the top box, the top gym. I know you probably heard of round one, Angela Davis, that had all the champions that came out of his gym. I'm and from, I'm, I'm born and raised D.C. Yeah, I went up to um, round one one night at the Silver Gloves and all five of mine came out that city that night and everything was history after that. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, no. I'm, I, if you you if you tell it, people know my history going through DC. Yeah. They say, and, yeah, we talking about the House of Champions and yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah. 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 Round one. You remember Coach Funderburg? Yeah, round one was that gym, Sugar Ray Leonard. Right. Um, another gym. Um, um, where um, they had like three gyms. Then then round one. I mean, um, headbangers start making their noise. Then you got the noise excuse now. Yeah, yeah, my, House of Champions, remember them? Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's that was before my time. That was, you know, back in the days when all the old heads was doing that thing. That's yeah. Kenny. That's Kenny in them lane. I call him the Bauer. I was I was in the street doing other things then. Both of us. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed, man. Uh, yeah, man. And I, while you were gone just now, and I was like, man. We're about to, I, I was telling everybody on the live that we need to actually buckle our seatbelts, man, because this 135 and 140 division is smoking. Oh, yeah, that's true. Smoking. Then they got that, 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 that kid from the Olympics, Andy Cruz. He's supposed mm -hmm. to be touching down and everything. So it's so much talent, man. I mean, I wish they had one of those uh, things that, uh, 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 that uh, Ward went through, the Super Six. I wish we still had something like that. Boxing changed, man. I'm telling you, boxing getting to be like the NBA now. Yeah, you ain't lying. I'm keeping it real. I, yeah. I, my vision, my vision, who got the best in their camp? Mm. Who got the best in their camp? Then you're going to start seeing it's not going to be about individual fighters. It's going to be that camp. What camp got the best fighters that's coming out that camp? You know what I'm saying? Going against the best and ain't worrying about it's about the fight game. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and putting up numbers, you know what I'm saying? Because back in the days, Jokers had losses and came back and beat world champions. Oh, man. Ain't nothing like a rematch back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we lived for the rematches back in the day. I mean, and, and you and, and on the rematch, you weren't sure who was going to win. Yeah, you wasn't. It was, it, was, it, was, it was like, dang, that first fight was dangerous. This second fight will be even dangerous. You know, yeah. so. No, so again, Boxing is live. It's definitely live and, 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 and going to keep on going because it's a lot of young youngins that we try to um, send a message like, yo, stay with your team, stay with your team, and just weather the storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And eventually we'll find out who's king of the hill, you yeah. know? You Preach. know, and that's just the bottom line, man. And uh, and thing about it is it's so much talent, man. They can all just keep on running it, keep yeah. on running it because – I mean, this sport is so great. It's the first sport ever, yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, you don't realize that, but fighting was the first sport ever. And, and you know? fighting was the time. <laughs> That's true. That is true. And people paid the watches since the Roman days. So you know, <laughs> you know, it's it's something that's going to always be around. And as long as we got. Uh, Good fighters, well, these days, man, these fighters, man, they are just amazing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I wish they all get paid a lot of money to be true. Well, I'm, I'm saying um, that 
it's based on their levels and whatnot because you know fighters they got different moles about them. Some fighters, I'm a fighter, but I don't, I'm not real forceful. Um, different take was different. You know, we was doing this in the amateurs. You know what I'm saying? It mm -hmm. was, I understand the business. I understand. Um, let me see how you're looking at when you sit there and look at Floyd. His team was unreal. When you look at Ali, when you look at Fraser, when mm -hmm. you look George, when you look at all the old fighters, when you look at Mike, you have to take a piece from every great fighter, Roy Jones, and actually mold that fighter to be that guy for that earth. Exactly, because that's exactly how Mike Tyson was made. It was just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. And he was a student of the game. They stayed and watched film all the time, all day, all night long. And they developed what we call the baddest man on the planet. Okay, and then you go back and look at Floyd. The family was a boxing family. Same, 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 same makeup. They just put the right pieces in the right places to do the business side and didn't look back. And, and I'm going to tell you, man, and I always say it, I've always been a Floyd supporter, to be truthfully honest, man, because you, you got to respect what he was able to do inside the, that square circle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Every Every person that he fought. I remember I went to his first pay-per-view fight up in Atlantic City when he fought a tour Gotti. And yeah. I'm gonna tell you, I felt bad for a tour Gotti. That's how bad he beat him. And that's when I really truly understood when they were saying it's levels to this. Because Floyd was saying it the whole time during the, the press. He ain't on my level. He ain't on my level. He a D fighter. He did. But you had Ward up in Atlantic City. Rumbling everybody, but, but you, couldn't, you couldn't take nothing from God. Their hero in Atlanta City. Yes, you hear what yes. I said? He was their hero in Atlanta City. Exactly. You ever said it when Floyd was trying to say, "Yo, man, I'm bringing something different." Man, man. man. And Him and Riddick both. I tour God and Riddick both were real good friends. Yeah, and, and Riddick was sitting right in front of me, man. And it looked like Riddick was about to cry that night, man, to see his mans get beat up like that, bro. It, it, was, it was rough. Man, I, I I go back and look at old clips on that fight, man. I was, God dang, Floyd was, like, showing out. And even in, I'm not even looking at the the, 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 the press conference and the weigh-in all up to the fight and all of which. That was, like, Floyd's before the Oscar fight. It was just, that was just, it's, it's, it reminds me. That was Pretty Boy. That was Pretty Boy. No, oh, it reminds me of this Hector fight. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Ooh. <laughs> okay. hey, look. Terrible. Bad man, too. Get what I'm saying? But when he got to Floyd. And how, and how about Corrales? Oh, man. That was a great fight. Floyd came back and rematched that to show him, like, he couldn't beat me. Now, and I, the, that was Castillo. That was Castillo. I'm talking yeah, about the yeah. Yeah. I sit there and look at look at the fights. I was like, man. So again, I want to see what's next and see can he take us, give us them 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 years of doing that because them other guys, I call them the, the other guys. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> like me with this shit. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, well, it's gonna get to the point where they're gonna have to put up a shut up. Well, that's, I had a show in the amateurs for my kids called Put Up a Shot. You fought for your own belt, and then you get a GTD belt. You go home with three belts. Mm. It was called Put Up a Shut Up. And I got people still asking me, the amateurs, Coach, when we going to bring that back? I said, we're going to bring it back soon. That sound like a winner, man. That definitely sound like a winner. But listen here, Coach, I'm not going to hold you up, man. I know your show about to kick off at 9 o'clock. Hit that, man. Yeah, it's 845, man. I truly appreciate your time, man, because I know it's definitely important in everything. And uh, what, what you got to say to the people before you get off? Man, hard call it boxing, man. Ask some good questions, man. I want to give you a thumbs up, man. I enjoyed your show. I, I embraced it, the, the time that you let me get on your your, your, your show, man. It was, it was real nice, man. I appreciate you, too. Hey, man. Uh Hey, I, I wanted to make sure that I was ready for you, bro, because, you know. It made it fun. That's, you know, you know, we talk about boxing and stuff, but I like to talk and be comfortable and talk about life boxing. 
You know what I'm saying? Because bo boxing is a way of life for these fighters. Exactly. And that's what I'm talking about. We ain't got to be talking a whole bunch of smack and this, that, and other and all that. You know what I mean? You know, I, it, it get the clicks and everything. But I, exactly. I, I, I like get the clicks. When they sit there with people with passion and hearts for the game, they're going to sit down and listen to it. Exactly. And that's why I call my company Hardcore Boxing News, because the hardcores, we keep it real. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're about the real fights. We don't care about how much money you made or any of that type of stuff. I care less about any of that type of stuff, man. I want. I, I care about y'all getting in that ring and getting out of that ring safely and giving us a beautiful fight. I said it all the time. If I did that, I'm I, I'm blessed. Yeah. yeah, I'm blessed, and and that's what we that's what we that's what we like over here, man. We just want to keep it simple. They got to understand the fighters all over the world are bringing something to the table for everybody to to enjoy. Yes, indeed. All right, well, give them your platform, uh, Coach. I know everybody know how to get you, but... You know, yeah, Coach Calvin Ford on Instagram, all the social media, Coach Calvin Ford, and you can catch me every night, sometimes every night, um, on the Rise podcast on 9 o'clock, Mondays through, Mondays through Fridays, Sundays at 12. That's right. So y'all can go... Get some popcorn real quick. Hit the bathroom and then go straight over to Rise Podcast. Yeah. And tonight, you know, we got we got something that was real special to happen, man. So come out and check out. You know, kids gonna come over there and tell you their experience tonight. See, we 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 building our kids now. They gonna right. come to the podcast and let them know how they enjoy their stuff at the um, Christmas shopping um, spree for them. You know, just give it back to them. Who else is doing that? I keep telling people ain't doing what we doing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I heard somebody say yesterday, uh, Coach Calvin, you need to get some of this money. This, that, I'm keeping it real. I love you. You need to get some of this money. Uh, he, don't he don't understand. I, I lived that life. And I understand you can't take it to the grave with you. Mm. I understand that the more I do for people that don't have, you know what I'm saying? That's where I get my joy from. So when I leave this world, Mm -hmm. I will get. That's right. That's right. Exactly. When you go see the father and the father asks you, what have you done for anybody else? You know the scriptures, bro. All right, bro. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Oh. You take it easy, boss. You take it easy now. Thank you, man.